converting from standard form to vertex form. So that's our first topic. So we have standard form of a quadratic, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That is standard form. Vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And I'll put a note here hk is your vertex, hence why it's called vertex form. So, whoops, accidentally pressed white there. This is standard form, this is vertex form, okay? So you gotta know that. So we're talking about if you're given a um, function in standard form, how to get it to look like it's in vertex form. Um, all right, let me see. Let's see. Squared plus x plus squared plus twelve x plus six. Okay. So if I have Three x squared plus 12 x plus seven. Okay, that's my standard form. And we want to get it to look like vertex form. So again, I think this is pretty easy. So I'm gonna start steps. Um, carry your A over to vertex form. So this is the easiest thing. You'll notice that, um, whoops. You'll notice that both standard and vertex form have A, right? And A is going to be the same thing for both of them. So in this case, A is three. So when I say carry your A over, I mean, you can start off just saying, Three, A is three, that stays the same. So that's real easy, okay? The A stays the same. All right, step two, find the vertex using Desmos. So three X squared plus 12 X plus, Y equals three X squared plus 12 X plus seven is our um, standard form. We can, new share, go to Desmos and type that in. Okay, so we have this here and we need to find the vertex. Now, first of all, you can see that it has these dots on significant points. There should be, yeah, one right here too. Um, Notice when I click inside here, the dots show up. If I click out of it, then the dots are gone. But then you can click on it and they reappear. So just as a note, if you are like, wait, I don't see the dots she told me would be there, then try clicking or clicking on the graph also makes it show up. Okay, so where's the vertex? So hopefully you know by now the vertex is the point right here where it turns. If it's going down, the moment it starts going back up, okay? Don't get confused with the other significant points that it has marked, like uh, it has the y-intercept and the x-intercepts marked. That does not matter to us right now. All we care about is this point, vertex. So I clicked on that marked dot and it tells me negative two, negative five. That's the vertex. So that's all you, you gotta know from Desmos. You typed in this function from the standard form, you got the vertex, negative two, negative five. 
Okay. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to make a note right here. Okay. Now that we've gotten that, our step three is plug in H and K to vertex form. So you know what your H and K is because you can make the connection right here. Let me see. If I move this down a little, then I have to move this down. Ooh. Okay, so the reason for me moving that down is to draw these arrows. All right, so you know what your H and K is because you can make this connection. The first number of the vertex is your H, the second number of your vertex is your K, right? So now that I know that, step three says to plug in your H and K. So H is negative two. And remember, notice I have two negatives here because I have one from here and one from here. They, you can't just use one to substitute in for both. You have this one and that one. And then K is negative five. Now this is basically it except that I always like to do a number four that is tidy up. And I'll show you what that means. That means dealing with the fact that you know that double minus here can turn into one big plus sign and plus negative can turn into one big minus sign. So then you can just write things so that they look neater in your final answer. is that. So these are the steps. Carry your A over to vertex form, find the vertex using Desmos, plug in H and K to vertex form, tidy up. So basically, um, yeah. Any questions on this? Like I said, I think it's pretty easy. It's just, um, People probably needed reminding because we haven't done it in so long. No questions, everybody's good. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so yep, you got your four steps there. Carry your A over to vertex form, find the vertex in Desmos, plug in the H and K and then tidy up. Okay, if there are no questions on that, we can move to um, second place was quadratic inequalities and solving square root equations. Okay. So quadratic inequalities, I also think is fairly simple. But I did notice on the um, assignment for that one, it seemed like people pretty much either got like all of them right or all of them wrong. Um, so if you just kind of were lost, then you were kind of just guessing and got most of them wrong. Um, but there's basically four rules or whatever to think about with quadratic inequalities. So I'll make these red too. These are our, red is our rules or steps color. A point inside the shaded area is part of the solution set. Point outside the shaded area. Oh God, I can't type today.
Okay, so you might notice that for some of these, I put part of the solution set and part of some of these I put solution. FYI, that's the same thing. I just wanted you to get familiar with both terms. Both phrasings mean the same thing. Okay, so I'll put that over there. Okay, a point inside the shaded area is part of the solution set. A point outside the shaded area is not a solution. A point on a solid line is a solution and a point on a dotted line is not part of the solution set. So, can we go back to that first? Huh. Let's just take this one right here that we did do. Let's turn it into an inequality. It's there. So, a point like, hmm, negative one, one, that solution because inside shaded area, okay? So it is inside the shaded area, so it would count as a solution. Whereas if we did one negative one instead, not a solution, because outside shaded area, okay? And then you've got something like negative three, negative two. So as you can see, that is on the line. So if we go back to our whiteboard, a point in a solid line is a solution. A point on a dotted line is not a solution. Looking at this, this is a dotted line. You can see the little breaks. So this is not a solution because on dotted line. Okay. So that is the, basically the quadratic inequalities lesson. Now, let me do another one. Let's see. Okay, I wanted to get one that was didn't interfere. I don't like having it in black and can't have it in red. Cookie. There we go. Okay, mm, now this one looks weird. Let me change this to yeah. Okay, so let me see something. There we go. That way they're not so much in each other's face. Okay, so here we've got another um, quadratic inequality. On this one, if you take the point, let's say three, three, you see that's also on a line. However, you can see the difference between these two lines. This one's dotted, this one's solid. So this one, is a solution because it's on a solid line, okay? So this one was not a solution for the red inequality because it's on a dotted line. This one is a solution for the blue inequality because it's on a solid line, okay? Other than that, everything's the same. Something like uh, four zero is a solution because it's in the shaded area and something like, two, four is not a solution, not in shaded area, okay? All of that still is the same. The difference is dang it, take off the label. That's the whole reason. This one is a solution because it's on a solid line. This one's not a solution because it's on a dotted line. And FYI, you also have situations like this, 
where um, the shaded area is all outside of the quadratic instead of kind of inside. Same rules still apply. It would just be that now this would be not a solution because it's not in a shaded area. And this one would be a solution because it is in a shaded area, right? It's just that here, it looks like there's a lot more solutions. You know, everything in the shaded area, negative four, two, um, 10, negative three, um, 12, 12, which we can't even see, but is up there, all of that is our solutions because they're all in the shaded area, even though it's big. So that's basically my, my um, lesson for quadratic inequalities. It all comes down to these four rules. You just gotta check where the point is. If it's in the shaded area, it's part of the solution set. If it's outside the shaded area, it's not. If it's on the line, you gotta check if it's a solid or dotted line. If it's a solid line, it is a solution. If it's a dotted line, it's not. Any questions on that? Okay. All right. If there are no questions, then we can move on. What was the other one? Oh, solving square root equations. That was the other thing that got second place. Okay. So solving square root equations. Now, I had a lot of people that seemed like they had gotten this, that it was going pretty well. But then I also had some people that were clearly, um, like in the assignments that I did on this, were clearly using some kind of online equation solver step-by-step -step thing. And here's the thing, if using those equation solvers online helped you understand how to do it, then I wouldn't really mind if it's like, okay, if I look at these answers enough, then I start to follow the work and then I can do it myself or something like that. I wouldn't really mind. Unfortunately, it's pretty obvious when they're not helping you because, um, because people's answers are vague and not at all like what I want. And it tells me that you're not even really paying attention. So. When I'm asking, you know, how my questions for those um, solving square roots tend to look like, you know, what is the first step? What is the second step? What is the third step? What is the fourth step? What is the final answer? That's generally how I, I ask you those questions, right? So what I'm looking for here is for people to say things like, you know, Add five to both sides. Um, divide both sides by three. Square both sides. Subtract seven from both sides. And then you have your answer, you know, X equals 10, something like that, whatever. This isn't a real problem. Although I could work backwards from that and see what the real problem is. Um, Okay, so um, that's what I'm looking for. But what I get sometimes, and this is how I know that, uh, you know, people aren't really doing it, is I get things that say something like, um, combine like terms, simplify, um, sometimes I'll get maybe something that says square root, then it'll be like check solutions and then it'll say x equals 10 or something. So none of this tells me that you know what you're doing, right? You're saying combine like terms. Well, what terms are you combining? Why? Simplify, how do you simplify? Check solutions, how do you check your solutions? It's just people writing down like steps that they see on a website that they're using and they're not seeing how it applies to um, 
the actual problem they're doing. These are very generic instructions, okay? Combine like terms. Well, yeah, you should always do that, but what are you doing? How does that help you, right? So if you know that you've been writing answers like this, right, then I have not been, I've been counting them wrong. I'll count this one right, just because I gotta give you something, I wanna give you something, but, um, but these are not answers. They don't tell me that you know what you're doing. In fact, they tell me you don't know what you're doing. I'm looking for specific to this problem answers like add five, divide, square, subtract, et cetera. So just a note there. Um, all right, so let's talk about getting these real answers. Um, so let's do a square root problem. Okay. Let's see. All right, that one's good. So if you recall, I have kind of steps for this, general steps. So these were kind of my general steps here. So the order in which we do things, we have to get rid of what's outside the root. So in this case, outside the root is the three and the plus four, right? The X minus five is under the roof and the three and the plus four are these guards that are outside, okay? So we gotta get rid of those first. Now, um, Let's see, when I say to do that, we gotta think kind of order of operations in reverse, right? When you're solving, you kind of do order of operations in reverse. So addition and subtraction comes before, we cancel out addition and subtraction before we cancel out multiplication and division. So does anyone know what I should do first here? Let me back it up. Um, this, when there's nothing in between the three and the root, right? It doesn't say three plus, it doesn't say three minus. That means you know it's multiplication. So the three is being multiplied. The four is being added. So I just said that we are doing, cance we cancel additions and subtraction before multiplication and division. So we wanna cancel the four first. So how do we cancel this plus four out? How do we cancel it out? I'm confident there's one of you, at least one of you that knows how to cancel out plus four. You can write it in the chat or unmute either way. Yes, okay, Casimiro wrote minus four. So minus cancels out plus. So we're left with three 
times square root of x minus five equals six. Okay, we still have that three there. That's still a guard outside. So we still gotta get rid of that three before we can bomb the roof. Um, so I told you before that three is being multiplied. So how would we get rid of the three? How do we get rid of multiplication? Nobody knows how to cancel out multiplication. division yes awesome so we cancel out the times three by doing divided by three six divided by three is two Okay, so now we've gotten rid of our guards. There's nothing left on this side of the equal sign outside of the square root. So what does that mean? What's our next step? Well, I just checked off number one. So step two, when you have the square root by itself, what can you do? What do you do then? Okay, step two says square bomb to get rid of the root. So that's what I always say. You've gotten rid of the guards. Now you can come in like and square bomb. So when you have the square root by itself, that's when you square both sides to get rid of it. Square root and square cancel out. All right, that's the point. Square root and square cancel out. That's why we square bomb. That means that we're free. We're outside of the roof. We've got x minus five equals, and then two squared is four. So that is the square bombing. Step two is just one thing, right? Um, so now let's get rid of the insiders that were under the root. So our goal is to get x by itself. Right now, the only thing in the way of that is the minus five. So, hmm. what do we need to do? What's the last step to get X by itself? You can type in the chat or unmute. Hmm. 
Yes, okay, um, wait. No, we wouldn't divide by four. So we're trying to get X by itself. So right now it says X minus five. So the five is what we need to get rid of. Okay, yeah, plus five. So it says minus five. So we wanna get plus five. And of course, four plus five is nine. So if this was a problem on um, the assignments I'm giving you, when I ask what's the first step, you would say subtract four from both sides or minus four from both sides, whatever. Second step, divide both sides by three. Third step, square both sides. And fourth step, add five to both sides. That would be the answers to questions I would ask about this problem. Not just simplify or check solution or vague things like that, okay? I'm asking for the specific steps. Subtract four from both sides, divide both sides by three. So here's subtract four, divide by three, square both sides, add five to both sides, and you get nine. Any questions? I was asking for volunteers for answers and I did not get a whole lot. So does that mean y'all still are uncertain on this? I'm tired. Okay, I'm gonna do um, another one that is the other kind of square root equation we talked about. Mm. Changed my mind. I want to keep that. Okay. So the other one we talked about is when you have square roots on both sides. Square root of three X minus five equals X square root of X plus seven. So the cool thing here, remember the guards outside of the root, that's any number that is not under a square root sign. As you can see, everything is under a square root sign here, right? X plus seven is under this one, three X minus five is under that one. So we basically get to skip that step. Then we've got, square bomb to get rid of the root. So right away, we can square both sides. And I like this because generally we wanna square one side, but you always have to do the same to both. So we just kind of deal with it. This time it's actually useful. You want to square both sides. It cancels out square root on both of them. Okay, so hooray. So that just means the square root is gone and we're left with this kind of basic algebra problem, three-step algebra problem. So my first step down here is square both sides. Okay, did that.
Um, okay. So 3x minus 5 equals x plus 7. Now here's the interesting point, and I talked about this, I think, before with, when we were doing this earlier. The interesting point where your next step, your second step, could be any one of four different things. Now, once you choose your second step, the third and fourth have to follow it in that path. But basically, you're choosing a path you want to go on. And um, it could be four different things. Um, basically, when you have something like this, where you have an X on this side of the equal sign and an X on the other side of the equal sign, a number on this side of the equal sign and a number on this side of the equal sign, your goal is simply to get all the X's on one side. So you have to cancel out the X on one side and get the numbers on the other side. So you cancel out the X's on one side and you cancel out the numbers on the other side. And it doesn't matter which side you do what on, right? And so because of that, there's four different possible steps you could start out with, four different possible paths you could go down. So you got to cancel out something. So what do you guys think? Can anyone just name me one thing that they want to do to this to help us get to a solution? There's four right answers. So you have a quadruple chance of getting it right if you guess something. Well, nobody's saying anything, so I'll just pretend that Casimiro's last answer in the chat from the last problem is his offer for this too, because it works. So last problem, he said plus five when we had a minus five at the end. So again, we've got a minus five. Didn't really do that on purpose, but oh well. And we can do a plus five again to cancel it out. So for my second step, added five to both sides. And when I say there's four different options, we could have done cancel the seven out by doing minus seven to both sides. We could have done cancel the three X out by doing minus three X to both sides, or we could have done cancel X out by doing X to both sides. That is all four of the options that we could have run with. So now I've got 3x equals x plus 12. Okay. So this one, okay. You already moved all your numbers to the right side of the equal sign. That means you want your x's to be on the left side because I said x is on one side, numbers on the other. So this X right here is on the wrong side. It's on the wrong side of town. So what you have to do, what you have to focus on here is getting rid of this X that's on the wrong side. So anyone have any ideas for how to get rid of that X? Y'all are killing me. How do you get rid of the X? It's not being multiplied by anything.
<sighs> okay. I don't know what to do with y'all. So if we have x plus 12, we can just do minus x. get rid of it. So 3x minus x is 2x. Remember, x is basically 1x, so it's like 3 minus 1. And that equals 12. OK, surely you guys can get this. We've got 2x equals 12. What is the last step? This one was subtract x from both sides. We've got 2x equals 12. What's the last step to get x by itself? I'm sure someone can answer that. You guys are putting me to sleep. Maybe I put you to sleep and that's why no one's answering. So remember what's going on between the two and the X. There's no plus, there's no minus. So that means it is division. That says two times X equals 12. So how do I get X by itself? Just gonna wait because you guys gotta know this. I know y'all know this. Two times x equals 12. How do we get x by itself? Hmm. <sighs> Yes, okay, Diego says divide by two, thank you. So we cancel out multiplication with division. And we end up with 12 divided by two which is six. Okay. So that was kind of um, disconcerting. Felt like you guys didn't really get it, but I don't know how much is really not getting it and how much is people just not paying attention or not wanting to speak up or something. So, whew, that was tough. All right. Any questions? Oh. What was that? Okay. All right, I'm clear. Okay, let me look at this poll. So we did the three top vote getters. And we had three that tied for third place. Um, ooh, I wish I could do both of these. I'm gonna do writing a quadratic given a vertex and a point because very few people turned in that assignment, which tells me that a lot of people never understood it in the first place. Most assignments I have like 50 to 70 people turn it in and writing a quadratic given a vertex and a point, I had like 34 people turn it in. So knowing that a lot of people never got it, maybe if I review it now, people can do that assignment for more practice and then, um, 
and then be able to do it well. Okay, let me see. Let's see. Okay. So that's the vertex and Okay. So given the vertex negative two, negative five, and the point one, negative 14, what is the quadratic function? Okay, so to do this, we're going to use our vertex form that we talked about back when we talked about converting, but from standard to vertex. Vertex form is useful to have when you know your vertex. All right, so we're gonna do steps for this one too, because I think steps are useful. Plug in your vertex for H and K. So as I reminded you, um, or as I meant, told you when we did um, converting from standard to vertex form, This is HK, the vertex, right? So again, that means H is the first number and K is the second number, all right? So step one, plug in your vertex for H and K. H is negative two. And K is negative five. So the same vertex I used for that other example. I think it is. I totally didn't do that on purpose. Oh well. Okay. Um, step two. I put my steps in red. Again, your point for X and Y. So one thing I didn't say before is your point can also be um, X, Y. Let's see. So again, the first number is the X, the second number is the Y, just like it shows here. So if we are doing that, Y is negative 14. X is one. And all that stays the same. Okay, one thing I did when I went over this with a class yesterday that I think was good. So step three says solve for A. Now, easy to write, harder to do. So I ended up doing sub steps for how to solve for A. So do the addition subtraction in parentheses. So what's in parentheses right here? As you can see, we've got a double minus. So that can turn into one big plus. So negative 14 equals A and one plus two is three. Okay. Step two, 
do this, find the square of the result. So essentially I'm saying do whatever this three squared is, right? Really got to plan out my location better of stuff. If all of this was just moved over here, this would all be easy. So three squared is nine. And as we've talked about a couple times already today, when there's nothing in between them, there's no plus. It doesn't say a plus three squared or a minus three squared. That means it's a times. Okay, plus negative five. I'm gonna call that minus five because same thing. Add, subtract to cancel out the K. So the reason I changed plus negative at this point is to make sure it was clear what we should do to cancel out the K. So the K is the minus five and to get rid of it, as we've done several times, I didn't realize I was using five so much, we would do plus five. So all right. So negative fourteen plus five is negative nine. Whoops. So knowing your negative numbers, how to add and subtract with negative numbers is important. <sighs> ah, here we go, that will work a little bit for now. And so fourth step is divide by the number next to A. So right now the number next to A is nine. So we're gonna divide by nine. So negative nine divided by nine. Negative divided by a positive is a negative and nine divided by nine is one. So we end up with a beautiful negative one equals A, okay? So that is the bulk of the work, okay? Is finding your A. Now you have a little bit left, step four. Don't be scared, it's okay. We'll get through it together. Okay. So step four, plug in A, H, and K to vertex form. Now, we've already been plugging in A, H, and, uh, H and K to vertex form up here. When we originally were to solve for A, right, we plugged in H and K and X and Y. But now we are only plugging in A, H, and K. And notice what is missing there is the X and Y. We do not plug in X and Y. Because the deal is that X and Y is one point on the function. It's talking about one point on the function. We want to define the function for all points so that you can choose any X and find the Y. Now, on this one function, the vertex is always going to be the same. So the H and K stays, but the point, depending on which one we're talking about, moves around. So you can do negative, and you know, you could do negative one if you want. We're plugging in A, right? Just like here. Um, and then everything else essentially stays the same as what you had after step one, plugging in the vertex for H and K. So as you can see, this is the same as this step only with your A plugged in. And if you want, you can do a tidy up at the end. 
So tidy up in this case, I think would be acknowledging that negative one can just be a negative sign. Acknowledging that double minus is plus. And acknowledging that plus negative is minus. And that would be your final answer. So I have the four steps for solving for A there. And so that's the bulk of the work is that step three that I put into four sub steps. But after that, it's just plugging back in. Any questions here? I know this is a this is a tough topic because of the whole solving for A thing. Wouldn't be so hard if the A was just kind of given to us or something, but we got to solve for it. So hopefully that isn't a deal breaker for y'all. If there are no questions, then I might continue. I don't think I have time to do another topic, but I will um, show you the review assignment that I created. Okay, so no top, no questions here.